Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and I wanted to give you a sneak peek into our online ground school so you can really see the quality and the content that we deliver every day to our online ground school members. This is a lesson taken right from our commercial pilot online ground school and it's on the topic of turbulence. You know, early on in our flying, turbulence is something I certainly worried about as a low hour pilot kind of getting bumped around. I had passengers that worried about turbulence, but what do we need to know and understand about turbulence now at the commercial pilot level? And that's what we're going to talk about. Remember, turbulence is issued as an airmet tango. It falls under our turbulence category here. Now there's actually four categories of turbulence when it comes to the reporting of turbulence. They are light, moderate, severe, and extreme. Light is categorized as slight erratic changes to altitude or airspeed. Moderate is larger variations in speed as well as altitude and attitude may occur, but the aircraft remains in control all the time. Severe large, abrupt changes in attitude and altitude with large variations in airspeed. There may be brief periods where effective control of the aircraft is impossible. Loose objects may move around the cabin and damage the aircraft's, or damage to the aircraft structures may occur. Lastly, extreme, capable of causing structural damage and resulting directly in prolonged, possibly terminal, choice of words there, huh? Loss of control of the aircraft. So when we're reporting turbulence, how are you reporting it as a PIREP to the controller, whoever you may be reporting it to? Now keep this in mind, whereas that King Air 350 might call up and say he has light turbulence through these altitudes, that's a King Air 350. Light turbulence to him or her maybe moderate turbulence to you and I flying in a 172, let's say. Keep in mind, displacement of that weight of that actual aircraft. Now here's something else that gets confused and is used really as a slang term, and it's used improperly, is this word chop. You'll hear people say, oh, I'm experiencing some light chop today. But are they really? The AIM defines chop like this. Turbulence that causes slight, rapid, and somewhat rhythmic bumpiness without appreciable changes in altitude or attitude. It's rhythmic and it's, it has a consistency to it. Whereas turbulence, we're kind of getting bumped and thrown all over, chop has a consistency to it. It'd be like if we could drive over continuous rumble strips, it has a rhythm to it. That's what chop really is. Because turbulence is defined as momentary causes, momentarily causes slight erratic changes in altitude and or attitude, pitch, roll, and yaw. So we need to understand that and not just throw out the word, I'm experiencing some light chop because chop has an actual definition, but people use chop and turbulence interchangeably in most cases. Now what actually causes turbulence? What are some of the main factors? So the main things we need to know, especially on a check ride, you need to be able to share things like shearing wind. How about the uneven dissipation of heat? What about terrain? Things like surface friction, all are cause, you know, causal factors of turbulence. Now here's another word that gets thrown out and gets used really incorrectly in most cases. That is cat, clear air, turbulence. I cannot tell you how many times people will say they're flying along at 2,000 feet under a cumulus layer and they say, man, I'm experiencing some clear air turbulence. You have to realize that just because you're in clear air, right, you're not in the clouds, you're in clear air, doesn't make it clear air turbulence. Here's the actual AIM definition of clear air turbulence. High level turbulence, normally 15,000 feet um, and above here, not associated with cumuliform cloudiness. Very interesting, not associated with cumuliform cloudiness. So like I was saying, we all know in the summertime we get our cumuliform clouds, you fly underneath of those, it's going to be bumpy. 
Yes, it's clear, but it's going to be bumpy. So this is 15,000 feet and above, not associated with cumuliform cloudiness, including thunderstorms, should be reported as cat, clear air, turbulence, preceded by the appropriate intensity or, you know, light or moderate chop or whatever it actually is. Is it chop? Well, call it that. Is it turbulence? Well, call it that and make sure we understand that. How about a topic that we don't discuss a lot? That is mountain waves. Take a look at this image here from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. You can see how mountain waves and how terrain can really create turbulence in this case. You see, approaching from the leeward side, and I'll show you what side that is here in a second, you could be forced into the side of the mountain, downdrafts. Take a look at it here. We have our windward side, as you can see. Then show, we just talked about downdrafts on the leeward side. Can you see how downdrafts on the leeward side could occur? Can you see if you're coming from your screen from right to left, flying with a headwind essentially, how you could believe you're going to clear this mountain, but end up catching a downdraft instead? Then also, too, outside of this, we can end up and find something called rotor clouds, which you want to find the nastiest turbulence around, you can find it in rotor clouds. So be watching for that. You know I don't like to talk about accidents a whole lot, but I always believe that we're doing the pilots involved in these accidents a disservice if we don't cover uh, and learn from that NTSB report. So let's read one here together, and then I want to hear in the comment box below this video what you think, what you believe, what you know perhaps could have been done differently. During the subsequent approach, ATC provided the pilot with several altitude and course corrections and about zero, uh, 0349 canceled the previous issued approach clearance. The pilot then advised ATC that he would like to attempt the approach a second time, and ATC provided radar vectors for the second approach attempt. When he was asked by ATC if he was experiencing any equipment problems, the pilot stated, it's literally a washing machine. As soon as we go through the cloud deck, the cloud decks at 1200 feet. Before that, everything's very easy. But once we get to 1200 feet, it's a washing machine. At 354, the pilot advised ATC, 66 Bravo Bravo is actually experiencing moderate turbulence. There are things floating around the cabin. We just learned the definition of moderate turbulence. It didn't talk about things floating around the cabin. I believe he was experiencing severe to possibly extreme turbulence. There are things floating around the cabin. About one minute later, ATC cleared the pilot for a second ILS approach to runway 23 at ORF. After the approach clearance was issued, the pilot advised ATC, we're having a lot of precession with our gyros. I don't know if the turbulence disrupted it. If at all possible, radar vectors would be appreciated on the glide slope. It's a very, very wild ride. When asked to clarify if he was requesting a no gyro approach from the controller, the pilot stated that the instrument just needed to be periodically realigned during the descent and that some radar feedback would be adequate. Just prior to establishing the airplane on the final approach course, the pilot advised ATC that the airplane's indicated airspeed was 105 knots, while its GPS-derived ground speed was 32 knots. At 4.03, while inbound to the final approach fix, ATC again offered the pilot standard rate turn, no gyro radar vectors. The pilot accepted the offer and advised. We're having a real problem with precession. At 4.05, the pilot advised ATC that the airplane had an estimated half hour of fuel on board. The controller provided the pilot with radar vectors and updates on the current weather conditions as the airplane proceeded along the approach path. 
At 413, the airplane was about 0.7 nautical miles north of the runway 23 threshold at a reported altitude of 200 feet and a ground track orientated toward the runway threshold. About that time, the pilot advised ATC that he had the airport in sight and was subsequently cleared to land. No further radio transmissions were received from the pilot. The weather conditions reported at ORF at 420 included winds from 230 uh, at 20 knots, gusting to 27, two and a half statute miles of visibility in mist and overcast ceiling at 200 feet. And this is an image of what ultimately happened that resulted then in this NTSB report. You hear that, you see that, and hopefully you look at this and you go, wow, I need to respect winds a little bit more, turbulence a little bit more. I need to have hard set personal minimum numbers. So I want to hear from you. Maybe you have a turbulence story. Maybe you have an opinion on this NTSB report that says, man, I, I wish the pilot would have done this, or maybe we should have stayed on the ground that day, whatever it may be. I want to hear what you have to say about turbulence in the comment section underneath this video. I can't wait to read your comments. Enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Pass your check ride, or I'll pay for it. Join our number one rated online ground school and participate in live mock check rides and interactive written test prep. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more.